Okay, another practice question. Again, transcribing DNA. This one is question two on page 28. This is probably the most difficult question when it comes to transcribing DNA. You're going to see a question very similar like this, so it's probably a good idea for us to give you a strategy on how to uh, uh, address this type of question because uh, probably the most difficult of these types of questions. Uh, so let's go through this. Uh, what it says, uh, amino acid sequence of insulin. Uh, this particular gentleman isolated a sequence of 51 amino acids. Just a part of that are these uh, amino acids in that sequence. Okay, so it's 51 amino acids. We just have four of them. And what they want you to do here is they want you to know, so that, those are the amino acids. And what they want you to do is determine the sequence of DNA. Uh, that encoded that information to make that particular section of amino acids. So this is different. They're asking you to actually go from uh, going backwards. Normally they give you DNA, you have to transcribe that into messenger RNA and then you go look at the amino acids. But in this case they're giving you the amino acids and want you to go the opposite direction. So kind of a difficult question but we're going to show you the best way to tackle this. So when we go take a look at adenine, the first base here, or sorry, the first amino acid, what we're going to look at is we're going to go to messenger RNA and we're going to see all the different codons that code for alanine. Okay, And when we take a look at the messenger RNA, we see that uh, there's four of them. G, C, U, G, C, C, G, C, A, and G, C, G. So those are the four different codons, messenger RNA codons, that will code for uh, alanine. And again, that's redundancy, right? We do that and if there's one mismatch of point, uh, a point mutation that we call a silent mutation, if one of those are messed up, it's going to code for the same amino acid anyways. So that's why we have this redundancy. Again, redundancy is just multiple codons coding for the same amino acid. So once we have that, now what we have to do is we have to take that into DNA. And again, we're just doing adenine first. So DNA, okay? So uh, we know fits complementary. So we're gonna decode all four of those messenger RNA codons into DNA codons. So when we go G, C, U, it fits complementary. G always binds with C, C always with G, and then U is like T, right? Always binds with A, okay? And do that for all th uh, the, the last three of them. So G with C, C with G, C with uh, G, okay? G with C, C with G, A always binds with T, and DNA does have T, so we're going to put the T in there, okay? And then we have uh, G always, again, what we're doing is matching these complementary to DNA. C, C always goes with G, and G always goes with C. So there's our four DNA codons, right, that would have decoded for alanine. So we got to go look, and let's just take a look at these first four here. Now, these four that we just decoded have to appear in this first amino acid. So we see that the first amino acid has, well, look at I can see U right here. As soon as I see U, I know that can't be DNA. So I'm just going to eliminate that guy right off the bat, right? Because we know that because they want DNA, there's no U in DNA. Thymine takes the place of that. So now we go take a look at, let's go look at B here. B has the first amino acid, or the first sequence of DNA as being G, C, G. Well, that doesn't exist in any of the ones that we decoded up there. So we can eliminate B now. So, got to take a look at C and D. C, G, A, does that appear in there? Absolutely, it does. So that is one of the possibilities. C, G, T, C, G, T, that appears. So now we have a 50-50 chance and all we've done is decoded uh, or determined the DNA uh, codons for alanine just with the first amino acid. So now let's go to the second amino acid. We've got to do the same thing. Now hopefully 
just with the second amino acid, we can come up with the right answer because it would be a drag to have to do all four of them. But let's check and see if we can eliminate and get the right answer just from the second amino acid now. So again, we got to take a look at messenger RNA and we got to find out all of the codons that are going to code for lysine. And when we do that, we see that there's only two this time, A, 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 and A, A, G. So we're going to put that into DNA now. So when we uh, reverse that uh, codon, A, A, A uh, matches with T, T, T. And A, A, A will match with T, T, and then again, G always matches with C. So there is our DNA sequence, our codons for lysine. So let's go compare now. We see C here does have TT that does appear in one of our options. Let's go look at this D here though. D, A, 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 that doesn't appear anyway, anywheres in those DNAs that we sequenced. So we can eliminate D and now we can, just by a matter of deduction, know that C is going to be our answer. I'm not going to do the other ones, but that is probably the best strategy to uh, incorporate when they are giving you the amino acid and they want you to find out what the DNA uh, that coded for it. Okay. Uh, any questions, give me an email. We'll go over it. Thanks.